Hello and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. This is an educational channel for all things wine to help you, the consumer and student of wine, to learn wine more and better so you get more from it, which is what we want. Um, so yes, we're an educational channel and on these series, it's called Explaining Wine Terminology. So we have a topic or a phrase or a word and we will talk about it at length so you understand what it means. As always, if you at home have any comments or questions or concerns, you can get in touch with us here at Wine with Jimmy by commenting on this video below. So that's just below this screen. Uh, whilst you're down there, make sure that you click subscribe and also the like button. Also, uh, social media at the bottom. If you are that way inclined and you like the way of social media, you'll see all of the social media at the bottom of each slide. So on this presentation, we are looking at the world of noble rock. Uh, a very important terminology. We're going to talk about what it is, what causes it, and what its effect is on the grapes and key styles of this, um, this production method in the world. And there you have the uh, influence of noble rot on the grapes we can see just there. And here you have it again. So this production method, which is a viticultural production method, it happens in the vineyard, is used in the production of most of the very, very best sweet wines, including things like Tokai, Sauternes, and also things like Birnauschleser and Trockenbirnauschleser in Germany and Austria in Central Europe. It is caused by the fungus, which is called Botrytis cinerea. So that's what we've got here at the top of the screen. So the fungus is called Botrytis cinerea, and it creates noble rot. Now, in fact, noble rot is also the, uh, a name for Botrytis. We often say Botrytis is the type of rot, so they are interchangeable those two terminologies. Um, now, one thing to immediately mention is that this fungus is the same fungus that causes grey rot, which is a, a rot of the berries, which leads to splitting, and those grapes cannot be used for the production of wine. Uh, but under the right circumstances in the vineyard, a benevolent form of botrytis will occur uh, and actually not split the grape, but it will concentrate uh, the components within the grape. And when we use that in winemaking, it can make exceptionally sweet wine. So it is the same as grey rot, but it is the more benevolent form. So what are these ideal or specific conditions needed in terms of weather? Here you are. So firstly, the grapes that are going to go through noble rot must be fully ripe before the development of the rot. Uh, secondly, the grapes must be grown in a region that provides lovely sort of humid, misty mornings, what we see on the left hand side of your screen there. So humid and misty mornings. So basically we're talking about lots of moisture. And really we're talking around 90, 90 percent plus humidity in these misty mornings. And then after that followed by sunny dry afternoons that you see on the right hand side. Okay so these are the conditions that are needed. The damp conditions on the left hand side will uh, allow rot to develop uh, on the grapes. So the morning misty conditions will start the rot to develop. The fungus will then puncture the grape skin with these microscopic filaments, leaving tiny holes in the skin. And then the warm sunny afternoons come along and they slow the development down of the rot 
and cause the water to evaporate from the grape through those microscopic filaments, those little holes that have been created. And as a result, water exits the grape, but that concentrates what's remaining inside of the grape. So your sugars, acids, and flavors and aromas. Okay, uh, so this is our process. Now, if you if you had the damp, misty mornings, but then no sunny, dry afternoons, if it continued to be damp, this would cause gray rot. It would rot the berries. So it's certainly this combination is what we need for quality uh, for our noble rot. So there you are, just to reiterate, the, re the results of this process me means that the water content, of course, because it is evaporated through those microscopic filaments, that decreases. And in turn, this increases what remains in the grape, which is what we have in terms of sugar, acidity. So both of those very important in terms of offshooting each other, balancing each other in the final wine, but also aroma and flavor. OK, and what do we get specifically in terms of aroma and flavor? There's a bit of a screen shot for you. It's interesting because the fungus can actually modify some of the aroma compounds in the grape and generate its own unique flavors. So wines made from grapes affected by noble rot will distinctively have things like honey, uh, apricot, citric fruit zest so orange lemon lime you've got on the right hand side just there ginger and also things like dried fruit aromas like dried apricots for example okay marmalade would be another one as well now in terms of the vineyard just a little bit here about what must be done in terms of the processing in the vineyard so the spread of noble rot remember is at the mercy of mother nature it's the weather patterns that affect it so therefore it's never fully uniform across a vineyard it's not the same and several pickings by hand will need to happen to ensure that the best grapes in the right conditions are selected this is therefore an expensive process that requires very talented and skilled labor forces pickers who have had experience or training and it's also done over a longer period of time it's all not it's not harvested in one or two days or a few days it's normally in what we call tri t r I S in French, meaning a picking or a, a movement through the vineyard. And several of these will be done over often several weeks. And also furthermore, in some regions that are famous for this style of wine. So for example, Sauternes, which is in Bordeaux, you will find that the ideal conditions for noble rot do not occur or they do not occur to the same intensity every year. Uh, if conditions are too damp, the fungus will develop too rapidly, and that will, remember, cause grey rot, which will lead to the splitting of the grapes, encouraging problems like infections. Some examples for you, wine label examples. So this method, as mentioned previously, is in fact used in the production of many of the very premium or super premium sweet wines. So such as uh, Tokai on the left hand side here in Germany and Austria, Birgen Auschleser or Trocken Birgen Auschleser, and there's Sauternes and Barsac too in the, uh, in the Bordeaux region in France, just to name a few. It's a much more typical process on white grapes than it is on black grapes, but it can occur in some black grapes. And another example here is that um, although uh, botrytis is the cause of both noble rot and grey rot, the term botrytis is actually frequently used as a synonym for noble rot. So you'll often see botrytis or botrytized certainly on new world sweet labels like the one here from 
Australia from Debor Tully, you'll see Botrytis semion at the bottom. So that brings me to an end of that section. Please go off and buy a lovely, viscous and textured sweet wine made from Noble Rot so you can experience the beauty and the complexity of these exceptional sweet wines. Now, if you have found this presentation useful, uh, we do have a wonderful e-learning portal, which is at www.winewithjimmy.com. You can go across there, and if you are finding that you want more information, potentially to help you with your studies, maybe your CSW, your WSET exams, then we have a wonderful portal there that gives you lots of access to exclusive video content, flashcards, short written answer questions, multiple choice questions, map-based questions, and so on. So go across and have a look. Uh, once again, if you do have any comments or questions or concerns, then please, please, please pop a comment in the section, uh, in the comment section below this video. Click like, click subscribe. Um, I'll pop up now just on the screen the website, so you can go across and click to that at winewithjimmy.com. And if you do find yourself in London, in the United Kingdom, come and see us. Come and see me at one of my schools or wine bar. So come and see me for a class, a glass, or a bottle. Ciao for now.